All right, we are now going to do the second half of the review guides, chapters uh, 9, 10, and 11. Uh, starting with chapter 9 here. Find the area of the square whose sides are square root of 3 over 5. They're telling you the side. So the square root of 3 over 5 in place of S. And so you're going to square both of these. So uh, square root of 3 squared, square root of 5, excuse me, just 5 squared. So you end up getting 3 25ths. The next one's a little more complicated. Um, it's, um, what they're asking you, and this is dealing with my class, if you have a pair, you get to go out. So how do I get from 3 to 21 is I need a pair of 7s. And I need a pair of 7s to go out to make that a 21. So C is the correct answer. So X has to be 49 or a pair of 7s. 72. Now, depending on your teacher, maybe how they did this, but I did a factor tree and looked for pairs. So a pair of threes and a pair of twos makes six with a single two. So now 180, two times 90, two times 45, five times nine, and three times three. Pair of threes, pair of twos makes six with a single five. Now let's look at the variables. X to the fifth has a pair of X's with a single X left over. Y to the third, so B is the correct answer. Square root of 24 times the square root of 2. If you have a square root times a square root, you can multiply their radicands. 2 times 24, 2 times 12, 2 times 6, which is 2 times 3. Ran out of space there. So now, pair of 2s, pair of 2s with a single 3. A is the correct answer. In order to add and subtract radicals together, you must have the exact same radical. So I need to simplify each one of these. Simplifying the square root of 12 gets me 2 square root of 3. 5 square root of 3. The last one's 3 square root of 3 times the number that's on the outside. So that's a little bit more confusing. But 2 square root of 3 minus 5 square root of 3 plus 6 square root of 3. 94, if you have perfect radicals, perfect square roots, you can do that. So the square root of 16 is 4, square root of 49 is 7, and there's a square root of x that did not get to be part of that. Same can be done with the next one, 8 square roots of x over 7. So 94 and 95 are very similar questions. Going back to the first semester, if I have something being squared, so I'm going to write it down here, 3 square roots of 5 minus 2 times 3 square roots of 5 minus 2, and FOIL. So if you watched the first video, we did a lot of foiling. 3 times 3 is 9, square root of 25, minus 6, square root of 5, another minus 6, square root of 5, plus 4. And so 9 times the square root of 25 is 45, plus 4 makes 49, minus 12, square root of 5, and A is the correct answer. <laughs> Anytime you are multiplying the denominator by the conjugate, okay, it's the it's the square it's the same binomial, different signed. So we get the square root of two minus the square root of x. They're not asking you to actually multiply it together, but a is the correct answer. Next one, show the. Anytime you're looking for solutions of a graph, you're looking for where the graph crosses the x-axis. So these two locations are the solutions to the graph. So in this case, it crosses it in two locations at positive 1 and positive 5. Now, dealing with roots is kind of the same question. You're just actually asking for the numbers now. So we're looking at pot negative 1 and positive 4. So again, crossing it in two locations. Um, we, saw, we did these types of problems a little bit um, previously. We're going to isolate x squared. And then take the square root. So if you watch the first video, you'll notice that we did a problem like this. I showed this problem. And you always get a plus or minus answer. Please make sure that you understand that. So the next one, done in the same way. We're going to add 12 first. We're going to divide by 5. And take the square root. B is the correct answer. All right. Completing the square. In order to complete the square, you must take half the b value. Don't worry about the sign. Half the b value. Half the b value. Always added. Always squared. So half of six is three. 
always added and squared, C must be 9. So solving that way, and again, I don't have a lot of space here, but x squared plus 4x, what value would I have to add? Just like you did in question 102, you take half the b value, always add, always square. So now this makes a perfect square, x plus 2 quantity squared equals 10. Take the square root of both sides. So x plus 2 now equals the square plus or minus the square root of 10. And so now using a calculator, and I'm going to get two answers here. The square root of 10 is 3.16. So now x plus 2 equals positive 3.16. x plus 2 equals negative 3.16. Solve both of those. You end up getting C. Vertex form. Again, completing the square. Half of 4, you would add 4. Half of 4, sorry, squared. This portion right here makes your perfect square. Subtracting 4. And so, be careful with your signs. A is a correct answer. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Quadratic formula. Negative B. I'm going to write it off to the side. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So now it's a matter of plugging the right numbers in the right place. So negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, a little calculator work now. I have negative 5 being squared. Be careful with the negative sign. Minus 4 times 4 times 2. And so I end up getting um, positive 7. I'm sorry, negative 7. You can't take the square root of a negative, and so therefore you get no solution. So let's try the next one. Negative b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4. A, C, all over 2. A, again, um, trying to come up with the um, value under the radical. So I end up with 25 minus 12. I end up getting 13. So now 5 plus the square root of 13. I'm using my calculator here just like you guys are. Divided by 6, I get positive. When I add, I get 1.43. When I subtract 5 minus the square root of 13 divided by 6, I get 0 0.23, and so that would be D. That's the correct answer. Next one. More quadratic formula. Negative B plus and minus the square root. B squared minus 4. A, C, all over 2. A. Be careful on the A. Make sure you understand that A value below there is a negative 2. So now, um, six. Uh, sorry about that. So I'm plugging it in the calculator just like you guys are. So I end up with 108. Square root of 108 is 10, negative 6 plus or minus 10.39 over negative 4. So now, negative 6 plus divided by negative 4. I get negative 1.10. And then um, adding, or excuse me, subtracting negative 6 minus 10.39 divided by negative 4. I get 4.10. B is the correct answer. <coughs> The x-intercepts of the graph of the quadratic function are given by 7 plus or minus square root of 73. Which could be the quadratic equation represented? This one's a little bit of a lengthy question for you. Basically, they want you to do negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and see which one of these actually gets you that particular answer. Now, that's a bit time-consuming, but let's try. Now, notice that I need negative b as a positive 7. So that right there helps me think that A could be it. Um, let's try that. Negative B plus and minus the square root of B squared minus 4. 
a c all over 2 a so now um, two, 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 negative 7 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 3 so negative 7 being squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 3 I get 73 so a would have those uh, would would also have that all right so make sure you're very careful here um, this one's a time consuming one how many solutions again you're looking at basically solving this using either the quadratic formula or other methods <coughs> negative b plus and minus the square root b squared minus 4 a c all over 2 a so I get uh, 4 minus uh, 60, which is negative 56, and the square root of a negative, there is no solution to that one. x squared plus 4x minus 8 equaling 0. Um, negative b plus or minus the square root. b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I'm looking at just under the radical right now. 16, 4 squared is 16. Minus 4 times 1 times negative 8 is 32. So I end up with the square root of 48. I really don't need to go any further. They're only asking me how many solutions does this have. And it would have two solutions. I know that because the square root of 48 uh, would be a value. And then negative 4 plus that value divided by 2. And negative 4 minus that value divided by 2 is going to give me two answers then. Next one. Uh, I want to solve this. So x squared minus, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So x squared plus 12x plus 11 equals 0. I'm going to go ahead and factor this. This goes back to uh, chapter 7. So factors of 11 that would get you 12. Set those equal to 0 and b would be the correct answer. Now you can use the quadratic formula. So you're not limited to only one method. So if you're really good at the quadratic formula, by all means you could have done that one by the quadratic formula as well. Next one, um, I'm going to do this by substitution. So you're talking about x squared minus 3x minus 3 equals negative 5x. Adding 5x to both sides, I now have a problem that I can solve. This does factor positive 3 and negative 1. So x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to positive 1 after I set these equal to 0. Now that's not the end. These are the x values of the answer, not necessarily the, the final answer. So now I'm going to plug this back in. Negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15. Negative 5 times positive 1 is negative 5. So I'm looking for two points. 1, negative 5, and negative 3, 15. Which of the function is a vertical stretch of, uh, excuse me, if I had y equals the square root of x, which one of these has a vertical stretch? Vertical stretch means you're multiplying by a number greater than 1. So C is the correct answer then. Which one has a horizontal translation okay, of 2 units to the left? So again, if I want to go 2 units to the left, I want to go to a negative 2. So now D is the answer here. Remember, you want the value underneath the radical that is moving it to the left 2, not to the right 2. Remember back in the first semester we talked about you know, plugging numbers in for x and then getting numbers for y. So 0, 0 works for all of them. I plug 0 in for x, I'm going to get 0 for y. So really it's the other point that I have to worry about. If I plug 4 in for x, which one of these is going to get me a y value of negative 4? So you ready? I'm going to plug x in, 4 into the first one. So a half times the square root of 4 is 2. Doesn't work. Um, Negative square root of 4 is negative 2. Doesn't work. Next one. Could be a possibility. Okay, I plug 4 in for y, or 4 in for x, I mean. So negative 2 times the square root of 4 is negative 4. And the last one is a positive 4. So C is the correct answer. Domain. You're always looking at what is under the radical and making sure that is greater than or equal to 0. So the answer here is D. X is greater than or equal to 6. 
Solve the radical. Isolate the radical first. So 2x plus 3 equals 11. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Square both sides. Subtract 3. And divide by 2. Add 1 to both sides. I'm on the next one now. Divide by 2. Square root of x plus 3 equals 19. Square both sides. So x plus 3 equals 19 squared. It's 361. Subtract 3. I get d. Subtract 3. Divide by 10. So squaring both sides and subtracting 3, I get a negative 0.75. Which of the following has an extraneous solution? Um, basically, when you solve it, one of your solutions is not going to work. Okay? So uh, B, if I solve that one, um, I subtract 4, square both sides, I get x to equal 16, and that works. C, square both sides, subtract 1 and divide, I get x to equal 7, and that one works. Square both sides, I get x minus 3 equals 16. I get x to equal 19, and that one works. And so you'll notice I go all the way back over here that I didn't do A to start with. Square both sides. Set it equal to 0. Factor. I get x minus 2 and x plus 1. And so I get x to equal 2 and x to equal negative 1. And x, not, x equaling negative 1 doesn't work, and therefore that has an extraneous solution. So when you solve it and an answer doesn't work, that's when it's extraneous. So here we go. We'll do the next one then from the beginning. Squaring both sides. Making sure that it equals 0. So I'm going to add x. I'm going to subtract 20 get our factoring skills now and you don't have to do this by factoring you could use the quadratic formula right now if you were really good at the quadratic formula but x plus 5 and x minus 4 is how this would factor set the parentheses equal to 0 x would equal 4 and x would equal negative 5 negative 5 doesn't work so you'll notice a is a very 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 tempting answer but negative 5 doesn't work and D is the only answer then. Okay, square both sides. 2B minus 7 equals 9. Add 7. And divide by 2. Divide by 2. B would equal 8. Inverse. Take the X and the Y and switch places. And then solve or y. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So x minus 1 equals 3y. And dividing by 3. Now, be very careful with this little step. You're dividing everything by 3, which is why a is the correct answer. Then find the inverse. Take the x and the y and switch places and solve for y. So I have a negative one-fourth x, a positive one-fourth equaling y. So again, be careful that you get the correct answer, and c is the correct answer. Mode. Mode is the number that occurs most often. So 0 0.7, 0 0.7, there's two of those. Um, I'm going to write these out. Um, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.8, 0 0.4, 0 0.8. So that's the only one that occurs more than once. So a Next one is the mean. You're going to add all the numbers up. So 8 plus 11 plus 15 plus 6 plus 4 plus 12 plus 7. 63. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers. So I end up with 63 divided by 7, which is B. Median. In order to do the median, you have to write the numbers in order. So 11 is the smallest number. 14, 15, 17, 22, and 29. 
So there's one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. So you're talking about in between the middle two, or A is the correct answer. Again, median, one, two, there's three ones, a two, two threes. So let's just make sure I got them all. One, two, three ones, a two, two threes, a five, a five, and a 15. So I'm trying to find the median again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine numbers. So one, two, three, four, the number, the fifth number would be the middle one. And so B is the correct answer. The value of X, if you get a mean, mean means you, <laughs> mean is you add all the numbers up and divide by how many numbers there are. So there are five numbers equaling 45. So adding up those numbers now, 32 plus 66 plus 55 plus 47 is 200. Multiplying both sides by 5, so 45 times 5 is 225, which means the last number would have to be 25 in order for this to have a mean of 45. Box and whisker plots. I'm looking at the box and whisker plot and seeing that the lowest number is 65 and the highest number is 100. So in order to find the range, you take the top minus the bottom. So 100 minus 65, or a range of 35. State the median. Again, looking at the picture, same picture as before. The median is the number in the middle here. So 80 would be the median. Looking at this data set, um, you're looking at the whiskers on either side. So this one has a whisker of 4, and this one has a whisker of 5, so it's ever so slightly um, the longer whisker. So we're talking about skewed right, just barely. Um, it's not, not a big, big skew there. Um, interquartile range of the data set. Um, so we're basically going to find, um, we're going to do the uh, data here, so 12, 13. Um, what's the next one? 15, sorry, 16, 18, 18, 20, 24. So now, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, in between here. So we're talking about 17. Now, 17 is the, so then here would be 14. Two, three, four. Right here would be 19. So now find in the interquartile range of the data set. So I'm looking at starts at 12 to 14 to 17 to 19 to 24. I'm going to pause here for just a second. All right. We got a technical difficulty. So I apologize for you. I apologize for that. Um, the interquartile range then, which one of the quartiles has a range? Um, this last one actually has a range of five. The middle one has a two. This one's a three, and this one's also a two. So D is the only one um, of the interquartile ranges. Next one, what is the third? Find the third quartile looking at the picture here. So this would be quartile one. This is quartile two or the median. This is quartile three, so B. Is the correct answer. Find the range, top number to the bottom number, so 17 to 28. This one has a range of 11. Describe the shape. This is definitely skewed right. Okay, so the longer whisker is to the right. Um, I'm going back here a couple slides. Yeah, um, just making sure that I had the right answer there. I apologize for that. All right. All right. Describe the shape of the distribution now. 12, 10, 8, 3, 1. Definitely more data on the left, which means this is skewed to the right. What is the measure of center of variation best represents? That anytime something is skewed, you want to use the median and a five number summary. If something is not skewed, then you'd use the mean and a standard deviation. Describe the shape again. A uh, little, seemingly we're using the same one each time, but it's skewed right one more time. Most of the data is on the left, making it skewed to the right. Complete the two-way table here. So again, they're giving you some of the numbers and not all of the numbers. So I'm going to complete the table. 
um, at 36 out of the 81, um, then what is missing there is a 45. Adding it up going to the left here, then that would make this a 35. Adding it going down, that would be 59 students there. Um, going across, this would be 22, and then going up, this would be 12. So filling in the table, and now it says, how many total students do not enjoy running? So don't enjoy running, total students that don't enjoy running, 22. How many males do enjoy running? So now it has to be both of those. It has to be male and enjoy running. So 35 students in the survey. Prices of cell phones, qualitative versus quantitative. Qualitative data is data in which you would not take the average. Quantitative data is when data that you would take the average. So prices of cell phones at a store. This is if you found the average price at a store. So one uh, B is the correct answer. Identification numbers that would be considered qualitative data. The favorite food of students in your class again qualitative data. And choose the appropriate the favorite academic subject of students in your class um, you could do that as percentages you're not talking about something over time so you're talking about a circle graph all right that concludes our review for algebra one and so wish you guys all the best of luck hope everybody does well on their exam and hope this video helped you a little bit